Dear Neely, look, lovely to meet you this afternoon. Thank you for sparing the time. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So you're the founder of No Hungry Staff, uh, which you launched in the autumn. Do you want to say firstly a bit about that? Yeah, so I launched it um, almost just by um, passion and shock, really. So I was noticing online that there were quite a common occurrence of people doing night shift and they were quite hungry because there was no food available. And because I don't do night shifts, I wasn't aware that um, they don't actually have hot food available if you forget your lunch or if you don't have the energy to cook something. And all you have is a poorly stocked vending machine full of junk food. So through my shock, I decided to start this campaign because I thought, you know, the NHS is one of the largest employers in the world. We're in the 21st century, why do we have people who work for the NHS hungry during their night shifts, making important decisions such as life-saving decisions. So, you know, I wouldn't want someone who is hungry making important decisions about my life whilst I'm in the hospital bed, really. So why should anyone else? And your website has an appalling statistic, doesn't it? On 84% of people who work in those shifts don't get access to hot food. And exactly. that, is appalling. that is appalling, isn't it? Exactly. And it makes us wonder, why has it been going on for so long? Is it because people have accepted that, um, you know, there's no change can happen in the NHS or, or, oh, it's always been like that. So why should we change things? Um, or is it because we feel like we don't have a voice to speak out? Um, for so that's what I am. I'm a voice for people. Um, I'm a voice for all the staff in the NHS who are struggling with um, having access to hot food overnight or during the weekends. And also, I also champion um, people who are struggling to afford food. So food poverty is rife in the NHS. So um, that's an important cause that is close to my heart as well. Right. Now, how the nurses and the doctors responded to what you do? A lot of overwhelming support, to be honest. So a lot of them have been really supportive and um, they have been so caring. And they've also been sharing their stories, which has helped me quite a lot because then I can share the stories to other people. So for example, there was a story about how a doctor was doing a 14 hour on-call shift and then he had and then he was quite hungry, so he, he, he had an empty vending machine, there was no food available, so he had to wait another 12 hours until he got home to eat. And another doctor was so hungry that he had a Weetabix and he soaked it in juice just so he could eat. And that's really appalling, really. So why are we putting them in such dire circumstances? Um, but yes, as well as a positive, unfortunately, this ha a, a, with anything, there's always been negative. So some people have said, why can't you just be more organized and buy your own food or who says, that the, who says that the trusts or um, who, who no works, i think uh, members of the public i don't think they quite understand um so yeah that's been quite shocking but then it's important to sort of block out the negativity isn't it to carry on with your vision and focus really absolutely now how are the trust responding to you the so trust they're, the one, they're the ones you're calling out aren't they really Yes. <laughs> um, surprisingly, they haven't, um, I haven't, um, they don't hate me yet. So that's a good thing. <laughs> that's always a good start. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So actually, they've been quite supportive. I think they realise there is a need for it. And, you know, staff wellbeing is important. And I think they realise, you know, nationwide that there is a huge staff retention problem. And that's because, you know, staff wellbeing is below what it should be. So they're realizing that there is a need, they're realizing there is a need for my campaign and they've been so supportive. I've had a number of um, trusts who have reached out to me and saying, we're trying to do 24 seven food. Can you help us? Can you direct us? Can we have some advice? And I have been helping them along with my colleagues in NHS England. Um, so Phil Shelley, Tim Radcliffe and the whole NHS um, expert group. Um, and also other colleagues such as um, Julian Nella, who, um, um, sorry, um, Junior, Julian Fress, who has Nella Davis company. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's like I always say, it's a huge team effort. I would not have gotten where I was without 
these amazing people who are on top of the pedestal, you know, bringing down their ladder to help me climb up to and and help others too. So I'm really appreciative to everybody, really. No, you're obviously a very modest, humble person, naturally. And I can understand why you did this. It must have been you must have been quite a strange journey for you, hasn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I've never ever done a campaign before. Um, I'm quite if I'm if I'm honest, I'm quite a shy person in nature. And um, so yeah. when I started the campaign, I didn't know what it would turn out to be. And I've had to come out of my comfort zone and out of my shell because Otherwise, I felt like the campaign couldn't come fo go forward. So it really has been a learning curve for me personally as well. And what surprised you about that journey? And what shocked you about that journey? Um, I think what shocks me about the journey is um, how, how time consuming it is. <laughs> yes, um, I, I went into it naively. So it's, it hasn't been easy with a full time job, but because I'm passionate, I make time for it. Um, and I will always make time for it. And for however long I need to keep going, I won't stop. So, oh, good for yes. You, good for you. Good Thank for you. you. Um, and what do you want to achieve? What's the end game for this? What's success look like? So what I want to achieve is every trust nationally has a 24-7 um, sort of system available for their staff. So ideally, I want a sort of gold standard 24-7 canteen mm. open um out of hours or like or like kitchen staff preparing food out of hours so it's hot delicious and affordable food um so it kicks two birds with one stone those people who don't have 24 7 food um access and those who are struggling with affording food and and that those are really important to me and if they for some whatever reason don't have a canteen service or a kitchen service then having a high quality smart fridge which offers or a machine that offers you know high quality food um, and it's really important that trust realize this isn't a tick box exercise and that the food has to be high quality and i do stress that because Yes, we need 24 seven food, but it's not, a, you know, we're not going to put a vending machine in the corner and call it 24 seven access to food, really. So those are very important to me. Um, and and what would really be amazing is if the government was behind this and mandated it somehow um, to ensure that this carries on. And it's not just happening for one or two years. It carries on permanently. That, that would be my vision. OK, and well, that leads on to the obvious question. How are MPs reacting to this? So my MP, John McDonnell, has done a, kindly done an EDM, which is a petition that MPs sign. And it's got 26 signatures so far through all major parties. So it's been, so that's calling out for funding for 24 seven food for trusts. And hopefully we're hoping that it gets um, through to the health, health and social care bill too. So not sure yet how that's happening, but Fingers crossed, it goes the way that we need it to. Okay. Now, it seems like one of the biggest hurdles has been the ignorance, the ignorance, right, with a lack of education of people outside the NHS just to the problems facing. Because I don't think most people think there's been really food poverty or there's lack of hot food. I mean, that's part of this as well, isn't it? Yes, I think the grass is always greener on the other side. No one really knows what anyone's profession is like until you go into it. And, and I think it's just, you know, all those com negative comments, I mean, I don't take it personally. I just say, it, I just see it as they, they obviously don't really know what we go through um, and they don't realise what the what working in the NHS entails. So that's my job to educate them through press and media and having a, having a um, gentle discussion with them to um, open their eyes really and realize. And then once you do have that discussion, then people are like, oh, I actually didn't realize you don't have any food at all. So yes, it, it, it's um, approaching everything positively, I feel. That's how I'm trying to lead the campaign through positive um, discussions and inspiration really and encouragement. Oh, I understand that. And your stance is supported by the hospital Food review, wasn't it? And Prue Lee's work with Philip Shelley. Is that fair? Pardon? Sorry? Your work was supported, your stance has been supported by the hospital review. Yes. Food review, which is by Philip Shelley and Prue Leaf. How yes. are they being supported? 
Yeah, so we've joined forces. So I'm part of the NHS clinical expert group for 24-7, and um, that's part of the hospital food review um, that came out through the hospital food review. And I'm working closely with Phil Shelley and through his support and his colleague support, we're able to um, carry out the vision of 24-7. So without them, um, it would be very difficult to be where I am today. Good. Now you're a foodie yourself as well, because you founded something else, haven't you, called the Baking, Baking Medics? Yes. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? So I founded it um, uh, accidentally, really. So I was really, I'm a, I'm a keen baker, and I just decided one day to um, start baking about, um, start tweeting about bakes on Twitter, and I ended up um, making a community of. Um, national bakers in the UK so we're all over the place um, so yes and you, you have so you can be a healthcare professional but you don't have to be so anyone can anyone can join really and we have annual meetups so last year was in Birmingham and everyone brought, brought a cake and we had a get together eating everyone's delicious bakes and and you know people can ask questions on there um, baking questions because obviously there are always going to be baking questions that we're not sure of and answering those and it, it just brings a quite a lot of positivity and cheer to everybody and it's also really important for well-being as well and positive well-being and since I've started it people have messaged me and said I didn't realize there was anything else I could do outside of medicine and I didn't realize I could actually be a baker until you encouraged me so it's so it's really a positive you know well-being baking group and I'm very proud of them and you know people have started as novices and they've become experts within a few months so it's just I'm, a, I'm very proud of what they've achieved. Oh well, good for you and now it, there's quite a food theme that goes through this because your partner in the campaign No Hungry Staff is also an ex-master chef winner and doctor. Do you want to say a bit about that? Yes, so her name's Salia Mahmoud Ahmed, and she is um, winner of Master Chef 2017, and she's also a gastroenterologist doctor. So she is foodie as they come, and every time we talk, it's either about the campaign or food. And she's an amazing person to have when you've got cooking tips. And um, yeah, I guess it's funny, isn't it? I feel like foodie people just sort of attract other foodie people. So. <laughs> Um, I'm very proud to have her on board and this campaign really speaks to her as well, which is why she's joined and she's just as passionate as I am. Oh, that's really good. And how many of you have you got supporting the campaign so far? Because you've got a petition, haven't you, you also, that people can sign up to? Yes, so the MPs have signed it. Um, so 26 MPs, but we've but to sign it, um, we've had to have, um, you know, everyday people like us um, writing to our MPs and we've had over 700 signature uh, letters going out to MPs so there's been quite a lot of overwhelming support out there and without their support we wouldn't have gotten where we are today so I'm grateful for everybody to help yeah. helping out I think 700 is just phenomenal really isn't it that's a great start and I'm sure you will you'll get there as well um, <laughs> and in this journey obviously as, as we, we discussed you're a shy person you're changing how do you see your, how do you see all these changes happening before you now? Because you must be getting quite a lot of pressures as well building on you as well. Yes. So um, it it's um, it's all about time management. I've noticed <laughs> a lot of time management, um, and it's keeping calm. I think is a real a real um, important aspect too, and. I guess you just have to come out of your comfort zone. So yes, I'm quite shy, but I've had to become more confident to obviously do press interviews and believing in myself. I think when I first started, I was always scared of every sentence I was going to say was wrong. But um, over time you realize actually, I, I just have to go with my heart and speak from my heart really. And you, you can't go wrong with that, to be honest. Yeah, no, absolutely right. It must be quite strange going through COVID and seeing what everyone did to help during COVID and then see that come to an end mm. and then this discussion arising now is that fair? Yes I think COVID gave an insight to us into what we can achieve I mean as human beings we're adaptable and the NHS is adaptable as well we've seen it years and you know we, we've seen it through the history every time we thought the NHS was really struggling we always you know pulled through and even through COVID I think that was the biggest test for us and 
we saw how everyone came together to provide food out of hours and during weekends and all these caterers and retail you know retailers came along to give everybody food and you just saw the huge smiles on everyone's faces yes we were going through a hard time yes we were going through covid but the food food to food to me is medicine and food is really important so and we 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 covid showed us it's possible and you know i'm not talking about something that is a dream so um it covid showed us it is possible and we can do it so that's that's what it's shown me and that's why i'm so passionate about it because we need to bring that back but, no i, I um, get that i suppose my question is how people learn the lessons during that period or do you think we've gone back a bit and now we have to sort that bit out yes so um i feel like staff have learned the lesson that staff well-being is really important and that they should be eating but i think yes as as an nhs maybe we have gone back to our old ways but it's important but people but the nhs does realize that we do need to change because i have got positive no, um, messages and support coming through the nhs so i feel like they are ready for a change Okay, so obviously our audience comes from hospitality. What would you like to say to them right now? Uh, um, I like to say to them, please, um, if you are in contact with your trusts or local trusts, please do get in contact with them and see how you can help 24 seven. And I would really appreciate your support. So please do follow me on Twitter or my campaign on Twitter called No Hungry Staff. Um, or if you like to get in touch with me as well, I'm more than happy to support, support, more than happy to support each other to um, drive this forward like a team. So thank you. Oh, great. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Neely. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you every success. Thank you so much.